Three pitchers to watch in 2024. I just put out a video on Hunter Brown. I have another one on Bailey Ober, another one on Hunter Green. So let's throw a few more names into the mix and I'll start with Ryan Pepio. First off, I just rarely think it's a bad thing when a pitcher goes to the Rays. They're elite at game planning and extracting as much value as possible out of pitchers on a game to game basis. The Dodgers are great at it too. What I'm really saying is that I'm confident whatever the Dodgers did to fix his command last year is likely to stick with the Rays. And on top of that, the Rays gave him a curveball, which looks like a pretty good pitch from a shape and movement perspective. The most important thing about that pitch to me this spring, and I know he's only thrown 10 of them, but he's using the pitch not just as an early count weapon, but he's thrown a lot of those in two strike counts. And he's also mixing the pitch up to either handedness of hitter. I think this gets to an important distinction with curveballs. A lot of them are slow, primarily early count strike stealing pitches, but we've seen a few curveballs of the spring that are harder, like Pepio's, with enough movement, most notably Spencer Strider's, that I actually think teams are more interested in incorporating them into repertoires to give a pitcher more chances to put a guy away when they get ahead. And that's especially true for guys with more consolidated repertoires and good fastballs like Strider, and kind of the baby version of this here is Ryan Pepio. Last season, Pepio was striking three pitches over 63% of the time, his fastball slider and changeup. He had a really good command. He was able to get ahead with almost every one of his offerings. And it's just actually when he got to two strikes that he was kind of more average at actually putting guys away. This curveball gives him another weapon to either handedness of hitter, mix it in deep counts for swing and miss, keep heavy reliance on that really good changeup usage in all counts, and his slider even looks a bit harder this spring. We'll see how that fares. His fastball location in spring has also been elevated more, which I like. I think this is a pitcher that is better than he was last year, and he was already pretty darn good last year, and projections just aren't really capturing it. Steamer, the bat, other projection systems on fan graphs have his strikeout rate kind of dipping, and they're not totally buying his command improvements. And his home run projection isn't really great. He's historically had a home run problem, so it's hard to regress that too much. The result is something like a four to four three ERA guy in 130 innings or so based on projections. I personally think the projections are wrong in not buying his command improvements. I think he's like a two to two and a half walks per nine guy as opposed to the three plus he's projected at. And I'll take the over on strikeouts because of that deep count curveball I mentioned. Home runs are finicky year to year, so who knows there. I'll say he's like a mid to high threes for ERA guy overall. And I think he could get up to like a two or pitcher for the Rays, limited by how many innings they want to give him because he hasn't thrown over 130 in his career. But again, this is just a simple scenario where projections aren't properly pricing in a few things. And I'm comfortable being a bit aggressive relative to how they're projecting him. Next up, we have Joe Ryan. He had poor results last season posting a 4-5 ERA, but the underlying stats there were actually pretty good, suggesting he was a high three to low fours ERA guy. He just had a massive home run problem in a really poor four to five start stretch last July that led him to a short IL stint due to a groin injury. Flash forward to this spring, and we have a few new wrinkles with him. First off, he's throwing a sinker. I think this is almost purely a right-handed hitter pitch for him. I did a video where I lauded sinkers for their ability to give even good fastballs some breathing room when a pitcher falls behind in count to a hitter. Count leverage is super important. It essentially turns even the best pitchers into pumpkins when they're behind a hitter. Joe Ryan allowed an 839 slug in his forcing last season behind to right-handed hitters with an expected slug of 811, suggesting that it wasn't totally bad luck. He threw the four seam 65% of the time in these situations, it appeared easy for hitters to kind of sit on it and slug it. The pitch was just brutal behind in the count. A sinker for him to me was such low hanging fruit. The shape looks fine. He's getting a lot of arm side run. This was just a no brainer. On top of that, we've seen that he's leaning into his bullet slider and he may have changed it a bit. Last season, he threw this bullet slider just 5% of the time. He mixed it in when the season started, ditched it in June and July, and then brought it back for the end of the season. It was more a righty pitch for him that he used when he was even in counts, kind of like a bridge pitch to get to his better sweeper or just work back to the fastball when he got ahead. It sat in the low 80s. It didn't grade out too well because of that velocity being low. Generally, these bullet sliders, you want to get above 85 miles per hour. He also had variability with the pitch in its shape, which you can see by how spread out it is on these plots. Now compare that to this spring and you'll see that the distribution is much tighter Perhaps most importantly, the pitch is up about three miles per hour with the same shape, turning it from a below average pitch on raw stuff to an above average offering. I still think it's probably just a righty offering for him, but I bet 
Because of this increased velo on the pitch, it becomes more prominent. And he moves away from throwing his fastball 60% of the time to right-handed hitters, which I really, again, think was one of the main issues with his profile. This is a situation where projections are already pretty aggressive on him, but I think there's reason to be even more aggressive given they're not totally thinking about these two adjustments. Projections say that his 11K per nine will come down about a full strikeout. I'll say it stays up there at about 10 and a half to 11 strikeouts per nine. He's always found the zone well, so I'll take the under on this walk projection for him. The home runs are the interesting part, similar situation that we ran into with Hunter Brown. But again, projecting home runs year to year is very difficult. They're super noisy. Over 70% of the home runs Joe Ryan gave up last year were to righties. And now he's mixing in two new pitches and backing off his four seam. I think we can aggressively cut down his home run projection to about one per nine. That may be a bit bold, but again, he's made two very strong adjustments to the handedness that killed him last season. And because of that, I think a mid threes ERA feels totally achievable to me across hopefully 150 plus innings. I'll take a three war pitcher here any day of the week, and I'm in on Joe Ryan. Last guy I want to touch on in this video is Luis Severino. Unlike our first two guys who had mediocre results but good underlying peripherals, Severino had terrible results and terrible underlying peripherals. So why buy into him? First off, we have a solid sample of spring pitches under StatCast for him, just like Joe Ryan, and his stuff grades out pretty well. It's just that his stuff graded out pretty well last year too, and it didn't really seem to matter. So again, why care about him now all of a sudden? My reasons are a bit softer here, but there's a story in The Athletic that he was tipping pitches last year with the Yankees. I imagine that's something that the Mets cleaned up. He also came out with some quotes that said he's been healthy all spring, which is whatever, but sometimes I'm gullible enough to believe in these kind of things, especially when you back it up with him training at driveline for a lot of the offseason. On an actual pitch level, it seems like he tweaked two things. First, the slider and cutter he had last season are both harder than they were, and as a result, they've shortened up in terms of their movement slightly, but I think it's a fair trade-off. The slider looks like it's up about two miles per hour with a couple inches less sweep and some more vertical break or lift, so it is dropping less. And the cutter added two miles per hour as well. It's got a bit more vertical break too, so it's dropping less. That combination between a pitch dropping less and increasing velocity is a pretty common occurrence. He's also mixing in a sinker a lot more than he had in the past. The pitch's shape isn't really crazy inspiring, but it's 95 miles per hour. It's got 15 inches of run, which is comparable to the league average for that velocity. And again, like for Joe Ryan, I love this pitch behind in the count to right-handed hitters. He now has something hard moving inside, which I often think helps pitchers with multiple breaking ball shapes like him moving glove side away from righties. Projections don't really know what to do with Severino. He had two stellar seasons more than five years ago at this point. He was really good in 22 in a small 100 inning pitch sample, and he was terrible last year. Most projections see him as a mid to high four ZRA guy without too much change in his peripherals. For Severino, I don't think the strikeouts or walks are going to change too much from a projection standpoint. Maybe there's a slight boost in strikeouts, slight increase in walks, based on the harder breaking ball shapes, but he's 100% gonna have more home run luck here. I think this is just more like a low to mid four ZRA guy. I'll say he's just better than league average, maybe a 4.1 to 4.2 ERA, which is a bit more aggressive than the projections say. And if he could get to 140 innings on that, which would be the most he's thrown since 2018, it makes him a pretty crucial arm for the Mets to hang around in the division. All right, that's all I got on these three guys. Thanks as always for hanging around the channel. Happy almost opening day. As always, comments are appreciated. Thank you for watching.